Hi everybody and welcome back to the Galactic Armory. Today is going to be something really cool. We are starting a new build, the Mandalorian Beskar Armor. Consider this the first episode in a full build series. I'm going to be covering all the different aspects of the armor and costume, and I'm giving myself to the release of Season 2 to complete this project. Now, it is October 1st, 2020, and Season 2 comes out on October 30th, I believe. So that gives us about a month to assemble everything and finish everything and put this whole costume together. The format for this tutorial series is going to be a little bit different. Since the Mandalorian has so many different aspects of his armor, from the hard armor pieces, to the helmet, to the cape, to the leather, to the all sorts of different things, I'm going to be splitting up the entire costume in different portions like that. So for this one, we're going to be covering the undersuit and attaching the armor pieces to that undersuit. You'll see above me here, these are the 3D files we're going to be using that are available on my website. I'm going to be adding a few things to this, such as the new Season 2 thigh, the butt plate, the back plate, the jetpack, and the knee. So if you've already purchased these files, you'll be getting some free upgrades coming your way. Otherwise, it should have everything you'll need. Now I'm going to be doing a separate video on the armor itself, from printing it to finishing it. This video is going to be about the undersuit, but I wanted to include how we're attaching the armor to that undersuit. So today we're going to be working with the unfinished prints. With all that said, let's get right into it and check out what flight suit we're going with. Now the flight suit I'm going to be getting from Sky Costume. Now if you look at the image on the left, it looks pretty rough. Uh, I would not call this a quality costume at all. But there is one important thing that we need from this set, and that is going to be the undersuit. Despite the shortcomings in the armor and all the other pieces of the costume, the undersuit is actually pretty good quality. If we take a closer look here, it has all the threading that we need and all the designs stitched into it already. That's going to save you a ton of time sewing everything and creating it by hand. It's also got a nice little zipper in the back side here so it can slide on and off, no problem. Now all we're going to need for this is the costume, so the total for this flight suit is going to be about $145. There are some individuals that make this flight suit, but I've seen that a lot of people use this as an option. That's pretty affordable, as well as pretty accurate. Now the costume arrived pretty quickly, couldn't complain about that. While opening it, there's a ton of pieces in there, and a lot of it we don't really need. We're going to need the top, the bottom, and the little cummerbund. Now you might be able to reuse some of the uh, faux leather in some of the other parts of the costume, but, but a lot of this just had to go because it is pretty low quality. Now trying it on went mostly well. I had a little trouble reaching the zipper on the back, but everything else went on pretty easily. I ordered a size 2XL since I'm a bit taller than most people, and I was worried about it being too short. So a couple of these pieces fit really big, the pants especially, so I had to adjust those to fit a little bit better. All in all, everything fits alright, it's definitely long enough, but it's a bit too big, so, so I'm going to need to do a little bit of adjusting. Now the pants actually have the thigh armor sewn in. So we're gonna need to get the thread ripper and rip those out. Momo helped me a bit here. It didn't take too long though. Now the cummerbund is the little piece that goes around the midsection around your waist. That was a bit too big, so all I had to do was grab some Velcro and put it a little bit closer to the middle. This way I'll be able to wrap it around myself tighter and just hide the excess. I held it down with some E6000 glue and let it set for 24 hours. I'm going to be using a mannequin as sort of a placeholder for the armor so I don't have to put it on and try it on to see how it fits myself every single time. I'm just going to attach it all to this guy and it's going to make life a bit easier. But let me tell you, I'm really glad that the, the Mandalorians have this whole creed about not taking off your helmet because this mannequin is really creepy. It has a totally messed up face. I am more than happy to hide this behind a helmet at all times. Once the mannequin is all set up, we're going to put the flight suit on him and then we can start worrying about how the armor is going to fit. Now the chest is the first important part that we need to put on. I'm going to be using Velcro, a long strip of it so that it has a lot of purchase and, and so that we won't have to worry about it falling off. And we're going to hold down that Velcro with E6000 glue. I put both sides of the Velcro on so that we can attach the sticky side to the flight suit in the location that we want it. Once I was happy with the location of the Velcro, all we have to do is add some E6000 to keep it well in place and let that glue cure. Now I wanted the abs and the chest to kind of be tied together, not too tightly, but tightly enough so that one doesn't get too far away from the other. So for that, we're going to be using some buckles and some elastic bands. The buckles are there to make sure 
that the pieces are still separable, but the elastic bands allow it to flex and sort of slump. So that when we're wearing it, it's not too uncomfortable, we can still move around and stretch our bodies. And that becomes very important when you're wearing this for an extended amount of time. I'm going to be attaching the buckles and straps to the abs and then adding the, the other side of the buckle onto the chest. I didn't want to cut an exact length of elastic band. This way we can adjust it if we need to. We're going to hold it all together with E6000 and put some clamps on it so that it doesn't move while the glue is drying. The thighs are going to be pretty simple. I've just attached a long band of Velcro to it. And then we're going to glue some of that other side of the Velcro to the flight suit itself. I'm going to use a long band of Velcro. That way we can adjust the position of it without having to worry too much about the Velcro lining up. The hip pads are a little bit unique. They need to be able to flex and move around and be more flexible. That way we can actually walk with these things on. And so we can move our hips from side to side without having to worry about these things moving everything else with them. So for this, we're just going to be attaching a buckle to it and then using some elastic to attach it to a belt of some sort. Now the thermal detonators need to sit on top of one of the hip plates. And for that, I'm going to be using some more Velcro. I'm going to attach the Velcro to the hip plate and have it extend past so that the Velcro on the back side of the thermal detonators can connect to it, and that way it won't move around too much. Now there needs to be a little bit of space between the hip pad and thermal detonators so that the hip pad can flex up or down without affecting the hip pad, or without affecting the thermal detonators. It is now the next day. The glue has dried so we can start assembling the pieces together. Let's take a look first at the chest and abs. The buckles fit nicely together and they're pretty well held in place. And thanks to the elastic straps, we can adjust the height of the abs so that it's still accurate. And now we're able to attach the chest to the body of the flight suit and it's held in place pretty well. The thighs are likewise very easy to attach. We just kind of slap them on there and they're held in place pretty well by the two strips of Velcro. Here's that elastic belt I mentioned earlier for the hip plates. I just measured some elastic around my waist, added a little bit more, and then added a one inch buckle to it. Now on that belt, we're gonna hang the buckles that are meant for the hip plates. So just make a simple loop, attach it to a belt buckle, and then we'll fit it onto the belt. We should be able to hide this belt pretty easily, so I'm just gonna attach it right onto the waist. And as you can see, the hip plate is still able to lift up and down without interfering with the thermal detonators. Now let's go ahead and slap the hip plates onto the mannequin. And with that, that should be all of the pieces that we need to make special adjustments for. The flight suit already had Velcro in place for the shoulders. So I just added a little bit of the opposite Velcro to it and just stuck it right on. And some other things like the forearms and the shin, those are just going to friction fit on my body and those won't move around too much. So let's take a quick up and down look at the armor on the mannequin. And now let's try it on. Overall, I'm really happy with how the armor fits onto the flight suit, and the flight suit itself is pretty high quality. I might have made a little mistake and put the right thigh up a little bit too high, so I might have to move that Velcro down a little bit lower so that it fits lower on my leg. But otherwise, this armor fits really well on my body. It is a lot more freeing than the Clone Trooper armor, which basically encompasses your entire body. It's really hard to move around in that thing. So that was part of the appeal of making Mando armor. It's a lot more flexible and should be a lot easier to wear around for an extended amount of time. There's still a lot more work to go into this project, so I hope you guys stick around for the next video. I've got a lot of cool items to show you guys, including one from a shop that just blew my mind. So I hope to see you guys again in the next video.